unstable energy attracts unstable situations. Desperate energy also attracts desperate, imbalanced, chaotic scenarios. So they become a magnet for more of negative scenarios and these scenarios can come in all sorts of shapes and forms. Okay, this is Mike Sigla from truefury.com and welcome to another video. So, why do certain people tend to attract a lot of negative scenarios, a lot of drama? If you are one of those people and you don't know why it is happening to you, you are in the good place. Uh, this is what we're going to talk about today. So I'm going to give you some ideas of potential reasons, scenarios, why you might be attracting uh, a lot of drama to your life, or a lot of negative situations, etc. People who treat you badly sometimes, things like that. And what are potential solutions to these things as well? So this is what we're going to talk about today. Now, before we're going to start, as some of you might know, I'm currently working on an online course called Exit the Matrix. This course helps people to transform their lives by uh, figuring out their imbalances, trying to heal them, um, so they become the magnet, the best version for attracting what is good for them also help them to discover their purpose, their passion, help them to attract the right kind of partner, relationship, all sorts of things like that. So if you are interested, you want to know more when this course is going live, go to truefury.com forward slash academy, have a look what's going on there, sign up for my mailing list and we're going to let you know when this is going live. Okay, so let's talk about the topic. The first potential reason why some of these people attract negative scenarios constantly is what I call just negativity cycle. So someone who, for example, complains a lot, like a chronic complainer, or someone who is uh, focusing on negative, oh, I don't have this lifestyle, I wish I would have this life. Someone like that, someone who compares themselves a lot someone who sees the glass half empty all the time. These types of people will attract more of drama, more to complain about, because this is their attention, this is their focus. And what happens is that when they do it, then another negative situation comes and then they react to it, get angry or you know depressed, agitated, whatever and then they start complaining about it again and you know dwelling on it and thinking about it and then that creates and attracts another situation so they become a magnet for more of negative scenarios and these scenarios can come in all sorts of shapes and forms some kind of a scenario where you know someone's going to snap at this person or whatever this is why i call it the negativity cycle now the problem is also that because something like that becomes habitual, these people become wired for negativity. So they have neural connections established that automatically, habitually allow them to focus on negative constantly. And it's very difficult to change it just like that because it's, it's a pattern that grew over time. So it works automatically in the background, right? It's like a habit, you know, they might not want to do it, but it just runs in the background every day. And it's very difficult to get out of this cycle if you don't understand it. And a lot of these people also don't even uh, see these patterns. They might think, oh yeah, I'm complaining sometimes, I'm negative, but uh, you know, they might see only 5% of that because it's so normal to them that they don't even notice when it happens. So solutions, a couple of, potential solutions here. First of all, completely starting to change perspectives. So seeing glass half full. For example, I don't know, some negative situation happened. Your boyfriend left you. And uh, let's say, I don't know, I've seen this scenario where 
a girl was in a relationship, a guy cheated on her, and now she's like talking about it for a long time, how she was treated, how she was good for him, and he left her, he treated it this way. But at the same time, she learned that he wasn't a good guy for her. So, you know, after that, she had a lot of better guys, for example, more, you know, better human beings, things like that. And now, instead of dwelling on that and thinking about how bad it was, how he treated me, blah, 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 it's easier to just learn the lesson, right? Okay, it happened. It's good to figure out why it happens as well, because, you know, sometimes, uh, very often, people are gonna do it because you don't spend time with them. Like, I've seen this many times when, you know, the partner is, for example, stressed and overworked. And the other partner is just and, and doesn't have time for a relationship and then the other person just you know f feels uh, abandoned and they this is how they react they go cheat <laughs> so it's good to also try to see why these things happened in the first place and once you learn the lesson you move on and you start seeing it also looking at it from a positive angle so 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 it's good now yeah it wasn't the right guy for me thanks to the fact that we separated uh, i could leave i've learned who wasn't the right guy and now i'm with someone else way better things like that so basically whatever negative happens learn from it and move on and do not dwell do not complain do not talk about it get your attention somewhere else or look at it also from a positive side because everything is perception you know you're gonna have challenges and you're gonna just focus on negatives of these challenges someone else gonna look at them from a positive angle as some kind of opportunities to grow learning from them things like that so everything is really perception so that's one thing right another thing is really gratitude diary so for example you want to reprogram your mind to focus on positives because it, it's programmed to constantly think on ne about negatives, right? Every day in the evening, you have your gratitude diary and you write down what did you like about this day. You can write once a week or something, you can think for 10, 20 minutes, what is that you like about yourself? What is that you like about the last year? And sometimes people think that, oh, you know, there's nothing good about me or whatever. Like people have this type of thinking. You can always find something to look at yourself from a positive angle. Let's say someone like me. For example, I might think about myself. Okay, I, I like the fact that I learned a second language because this is a big achievement. It took many years or I go to the gym and, you know, something I take for granted. I'm physically strong, you know, I've been into sports for most of my life. This is just so basic, normal for me. Then I go, I see these guys who struggle with things or pay for personal trainers or are overweight and they look at me and I wish, yeah, I would like to have the, his physique, whatever. So things for me that seem like not a big deal for our people are a big deal. And, you know, a lot of people, if you look at you live in Western countries, very often you have way more than 90% of people on the planet, 70%, whatever. So you can always find positives about yourself. So gratitude, diary, give it a try. Another reason why some people tend to attract a lot of drama, people who lack self-love. So for example, someone who is always kind, helpful, but they don't think about themselves, they think about others more, and then they tend to attract the opposite. So people who are parasitical, that are gonna abuse them, that are not gonna appreciate, because these people don't value themselves enough, this is reflected in how people treat them. So very often people who are very kind and always say yes and wanna give more than they should, they start attracting people who are very parasitical and they take and take and take and this creates this drama of like attracting people who are toxic, who abuse me, who use me all the time, things like that. 
This is very common. So solution is putting boundaries. First, you are the most important always before you're gonna help anyone else. First, if someone wants something from you, you ask yourself if this is fair, if this is fair for me, don't say yes to everything. Always, you know, always you are the most important first and then someone else. So these are some of the solutions. I'm doing coaching one-on-one -on -one as well. If you wanna work with me, I help people to figure out these patterns and heal them. Uh, you can check out truefury.com forward slash coaching if you wanna um, work with me on some of these things. Another thing I see why some people tend to attract a lot of drama is just chaos, chaotic energy, right? So some people are all over the place, very messy with their thoughts, with their behaviors, with their emotions sometimes as well. So whatever is unstable, right? Unstable energy attracts unstable situations. Desperate energy also attracts desperate, imbalanced, chaotic scenarios. So if someone badly wants something, I really want to have this relationship. I'm so unhappy now because I'm single, blah, blah, blah. And someone is very desperate about something or desperate at work, getting the results or whatever it is. Anything out of balance, any kind of behavior that is chaotic will attract more of these types of situations to your life. So if you are someone like that, that has mess, is messy or is chaotic or has this desperate energy, this desperate need, this is very likely why, you know, some of these scenarios happen to you. So obviously something to think about, you know, meditation is very good to keep yourself in check, to start balancing yourself to not to react, you know, become calmer. Also being strict about your environment. So for example, messy environment is encouraging this type of behavior, right? So like computer clean, not hundred tabs open, not a mess on your desktop, uh, room, things like that. The more you clean and balance external, the more it reflects internally and the other way around. So finally, another potential reason why some people attract a lot of drama is karma, basically. A lot of people that, a lot, that always attract negative situations is cutting corners, let's say. So I've seen it with people who, for example, I don't know, the guy is kind of like cheating the government some money, like whatever, he, he's like getting job seekers allowance, but he's not looking for a job, but wasting time on something else or using that money. Or the same person is like getting a job and then just gets lazy at job and uh, then goes to another job. and and attracts bad treatment or someone cheated on them with money, whatever. So sometimes people who cut corners, let's say, one way or another, they will attract the same towards them. Some of these people don't even think about these things because they think this is not a big deal, but this always, always going to attract more of the same towards you in different forms. So I've seen it many times with people who gonna do a little bit of like these dodgy tricks here and there and cut, take some money from here, whatever, not be honest or things like that. And then they tend to attract more of that towards them in different forms, different situations. And it's, uh, they don't see it as anything wrong, but that causes the situations they get. Okay, so these are some examples. It depends on situations, depends on you. And uh, again, if you wanna, work with me. I'm doing coaching one-on-one. -on -one. Have a look at truefury.com forward slash coaching. Get in touch and check out truefury.com forward slash academy to sign up for mailing list for upcoming online course. So thanks for watching. Let me know what you think about it in the comments and uh, share the video if it resonates. Let me know if it makes sense. Follow me on Instagram. It's Mike Saigula on Instagram. Until next time.